today's episode, we see everyone doing the wrong sketch, a bit of an emergency for Wilson, a bit of the rage monster, and a story of a real friend. So let's begin the episode with the wrong sketch. <laughs> Hey, honey, I thought I would make dinner tonight to celebrate your band getting its first official groupie. Who? Me. Oh, that's so sweet, but I thought you didn't know how to cook. I don't. They're oh. dinosaur nuggets. Oh, look at that. Um, honey, before you get too excited, there's something I have to confess. What? You will confess eventually. <laughs> Tell him, Whitney. Tell him your dark secret. Only a fool would trust... James, this is the wrong sketch. <laughs> what? This isn't the detective sketch. That's next week. You're not supposed to be here. But you said the line, I will never confess. No, I didn't. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um... <clears throat> There's something I have to confess. What? We're kicking you out of the fan club. What? But I'm the only fan. Well, you're not a hipster. I'm not? No. <laughs> Better to be thought mainstream and remain silent than to speak out and remove all doubt. James! What? I thought this was our hipster parody of the Lincoln film. We don't have a sketch that matches that description, James. Oh. oh. Yeah, and that quote was from Mark Twain, not Lincoln. Oh. No, James, we don't or have a Mark Twain not. sketch either. You know what? Fine. I can tell when I'm not wanted. I'm not sure you can. I'm just gonna go backstage and get something to eat. Okay. Uh, you want something to eat? <laughs> How about some Basque? <laughs> Jason, what are you doing? That's not even your character. <laughs> How dare you? James, uh, I apologize for the inconvenience. You guys are seriously ruining this sketch. Yeah. Did someone say literally? No, no, we said seriously. Natalie, you are literally the wrong gender to play Captain Literally. Okay. Where's the bathroom? Oh, Steven. <laughs> We've just been over this. You can't be Lady Shadow. You are a man and she is a very pregnant woman. <sighs> You're right. This is awkward. Awkward! <laughs> ah! yeah. How do you like it, Jason? Uh, my emotions are everywhere right now. <laughs> So is the defensive line, men, but stand firm and hold your backs up, cause I got a hunch Mel, that we're gonna... Mel, we cut the hunchback of the University of Notre Dame sketch. <laughs> really bad idea. Dang it, <gasps> Lady Shadow. What is wrong with all of you? Did anyone bother to read the script for the sketch? I mean, none of you are supposed to be here. <laughs> You people have killed the funny. This sketch is burning before our eyes. Not literally. <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. Yeah. Hey, how come no one dressed up like Anne? Well, just kind of... I would rather die. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, finally, someone who's actually supposed to be in this sketch. Good evening, Matthew. Sorry, he insisted. What, oh, Spencer? <laughs> this is literally the worst way to start the season. Balance restore! <laughs>
Wowzers! Me! In charge of the rescue centre! I can't believe it! Hope Callie's gonna be alright going to help the Pinewood Island work. Hi! I, uh, may or may not have a bit of a situation. I think my firebox might have caught on fire. What? I know, right? Didn't even know I could do that! We'll be right there. Oh, take your time. I'll be all right. You are on fire! Oh, I've been through much worse than this. What? <sighs> oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! What do I do? Okay, okay. Think. What would Harrison do? I know what to do! Okay, what would Chatsworth do? <laughs> Dumba? Who set the house on fire again? Sorry! That's why he never lets play Booster Bash in the shed. Action Chugger! That could work, but I can't fly. What to do, what to... Thomas! Oh, thank you, Wilson. I thought I was going to be steamed to lunch for a minute. All in a day's work. I'm not trusting you near water tankers again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You want to see me, boss? Yeah, come right in. Yeah, take a seat. Oh, it's okay. I already know what's coming. Just go ahead. Can you say it? How would... Yeah, I heard through the grapevine. Dude, uh, you should probably be looking for a new job soon. What? You hit me with it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're fired. Yeah, yeah, okay. Wow, yeah, crazy. I didn't even really like working here anyways. Okay. Okay. Wow, look at that. Hey, look at Rage Monster. Here he comes. You want to see what a corporate rage looks like? <laughs> Because there's other people working here, so we gotta keep it together. HR! Oh, I'm so peeved off! HR! There's your HR! HR! Hey, you want some uh, paper clips? Hey. Oh! I saw one! I'm out! Don't even like you! I mean, honestly, all things considered, that wasn't that bad of a rage. You know, a lot of people were probably expecting a lot more, but I mean, the globe's good as ever. Just put some of these things back. Whew, not too shabby. Ah! Oh, I got folded like a lawn chair! You thought that was it? Yeah, I did. Ah! Gemma was a student who had attended the primary school near Dryall Station. She was a kind little girl who had excelled in her studies and was well respected by her teachers and other students. But although she had some friends, she was not good at making many due to her shyness. One day, two new students arrived at the school to attend classes there. The principal had asked Gemma to show them around. They were called Sonia and Sally. They were very popular amongst the other school kids, but they kept an eye on Gemma. Gemma, they called. Could you do our homework for us? Well, I, um, replied Gemma. Well, we're going to be busy with other things tonight when we get home and won't have time for homework. Please be a friend, please, they asked sweetly. Well, all right, replied Gemma. Thanks, Gemma, you're a pal, they replied happily. Sonia and Sally had done that for days and days, but because of that, Gemma had no time to finish hers, and she began to fall behind her studies. What's the matter, Gemma? asked one of her friends during recess. Usually you're very good in class. Why are you slumping? Before she could reply, Sonia and Sally came up to her again. Gemma, can you please do our homework tonight? they asked. 
Why are you asking her? replied Gemma's friend. Why don't you do it? But the two girls ignored her and asked Gemma if she could do their homework for them. Gemma agreed and the two girls walked happily away. But her friend wasn't so pleased. Why did you agree to do their homework? This is why you're falling behind, Gemma. Well, they are friends of mine, Becky. I'm happy to do theirs as well as mine, replied Gemma. I've been your friend longer than they have been, and I never take advantage of you when it comes to my homework. You're too shy to say no, Gemma. You have to get over that and tell them no for once. Otherwise, I don't want to be friends with someone who couldn't stand up towards anybody. Gemma knew that she was right, but no matter how many times she tried to say no, she couldn't help herself and reluctantly agreed to do Sonia and Sally's homework. Becky was cross. Gemma, she said crossly, if Sonia and Sally told you to jump out of a train, would you do it? Gemma looked at Becky and sighed. Well, no. Then why is it so hard for you to say no to them about doing their homework? I'm just being a friend, Becky. A friend doesn't, but before she could finish, Gemma then said, I know what you're going to say. A friend shouldn't take advantage of another's. I'm tired of your lectures, Becky. I was just helping them. And she stormed away, leaving Becky behind feeling sad and cross. The two girls hadn't spoken to each other for a few days, and Gemma continued doing homework for Sonia and Sally. However, her teachers were worried that she was slipping behind her class, and with that her parents became concerned too. Gemma, is there something the matter at school? asked her mother as she was attending to her garden. No, Mum, everything's fine, she said. The end of the school term had finally arrived, and all the children were looking forward to their break. Gemma was waiting at the station with Sonia and Sally, and they were chatting excitedly about what they were going to do during the summer holidays. I think my parents will take me and my little brother to that new movie that Thomas is starring in, replied Gemma. It's not really my thing, but my little brother is interested in it. Oh, that's nice, replied Sonia. Sonia and Sally were glad to have the summer off, but it wouldn't be as much fun as telling Gemma what to do, and they decided to have some fun one more time before they go their separate ways for the summer. Later, Thomas puffed into the station with Annie and Clarabelle. All the students boarded the train. As Gemma found her seat, the two girls decided to put their plan into action. Hey Gemma, we dare to put your head out of the window and stick your tongue out towards the porter, they said. Gemma was surprised that they were asking her to do such a thing. W why she stammered. Come on, it's a dare, they said slyly. You can't back down from a dare, you know. Gemma was nervous. She then remembered what Becky had said to her once about being in this situation. Come on, we're your friends. You can't back down from a dare from your friends. Gemma then managed to pluck up courage and then said, No! What was that? asked the two girls crossly. I said no, you two. Honestly, I thought you two were my friends, but lately you've been taking advantage of me from my studies, and I was falling behind this term. Becky was right, you two aren't true friends. So you're nothing but a coward. You're soft, and we know that because you did our homework because you had the brains, and that will leave us to do our own thing. You can't back down from a dare. Meanwhile, the guard was about to blow his whistle. When... Gemma fell out of the train, while Sally and Sonia raced away with their bags out of the station. Thomas was shocked and the guard and station master ran up towards her, picked her up and sat her on an empty luggage trolley. Poor Gemma looked dazed and surprised and was deeply upset. Becky jumped out of Annie and rushed to her friend. Don't worry young miss, replied the station master. The pause at her call for policeman Len and he'll be here soon. But poor Gemma was so upset by what had just happened as well as being used by Sonia and Sally during the term. Policeman Len soon came to the station. Good afternoon Miss Gemma, I'm Policeman Len. Could you please answer a few questions about what's just happened? Gemma was a little bit hesitant at first, but then Policeman Len smiled and said, You don't have to worry Gemma, I'll just want to know what happened so I can make a report. Gemma soon calmed down and said, Two girls had pushed me off of Thomas's train. It was a dare. They told me to stick my tongue out towards the porter. I said no because they were taking advantage of me despite being friends. 
You were right, Gemma, to not want to do such a silly thing, and you were very brave to say no and stick up towards them. Your so-called friends shouldn't do a dangerous thing like that on Thomas's or anyone else's train, and we must try and stop them. Can you give me their names? Thomas and Becky agreed with what Policeman Len had just said, but when he asked for their names, Gemma started to shiver and began to worry. But, but, what if they... She stammered. Don't worry. They need never know how I found out, said Policeman Len. And you won't be seeing them for a few weeks as well, Gemma, replied Thomas. Just be brave, Gemma, and know that your true friends are behind you, replied Becky. Gemma smiled and told Policeman Len their names. Thank you. I'll be having a word with their parents tonight. Thank you, Gemma, and I hope you have a lovely summer break. And Policeman Len walked away to his car, and Gemma and Becky boarded the train, and Thomas steamed away. As for Sonia and Sally, the two had managed to hide after their trick and took a different train back home. But when they returned, they saw their parents with Policeman Len, and they weren't pleased with what they were told. Girls, replied the father crossly, you shouldn't have done something like that. What if Thomas had moved and Gemma fell down on the line? She would be seriously hurt or even killed. The two girls felt ashamed. And the school told us that someone noticed you two taking advantage of Gemma by using her to do your homework. We didn't pay for your education just so you can flounce off school. And with that, you'll be attending summer school. The two girls were cross. But they knew they deserved it. When school returned for another year, Gemma managed to catch up and began to excel in her studies again. Her and Becky had made amends over the summer, and Sonia and Sally had never taken advantage of her again. <laughs>